So hello everybody, seems I'm getting too much temp buying old gear caused by reading too much old sound on sound magazines and I already bought a Roland JV1080 and a Kawai K4R and now I ended up with an Emu, <laughs> an Emu Oddity 2000 which is basically the last and biggest unit in the series of Proteus modules. It was a third iteration. Yeah, the largest and the greatest. And yeah, also indicated by you get these things so damn cheap. It's unbelievable. I already saw first Proteus devices for 50 euros and I paid 250 euros for this module, which is much more powerful. And the nice thing about it is that it also has some real-time controllers on the front, so you can also interact to that. And the main reason I bought it is that the sound is, yes, yeah, it sounds definitely digital, but also very powerful and thick and make sounds which you are not used to from all the other romplers on the market and especially this device has a lot of yeah analogish sounds which definitely don't sound analog but are in that domain of sounds but in this video i will focus on fixing some issues which you always get with these old things but at the end you will get some nice sound demo so if you don't care about getting it up to speed just skip to the end and watch that so when i booted up device i got this nasty error that the nvram has been reset and doing some research on the internet it turns out that it is caused by a low battery or a totally empty battery so what we need to do first is to replace the battery first let's have a look at the outside we have here some nice controls for it which you can access 12 parameters by this flip switch and at the back of the device, you have the usual three MIDI ports and you have actually three stereo outputs, which is really nice and including a SPDIF digital output, which is also not so common on such modules of the time. Yeah, so what we need to do is we need to remove two screws on the left side and two screws on the right side. And the back has three more screws, but that's pretty easy and straightforward to do. And then we just can remove the top cover and get to the inside. And the inside looks uh, still pretty in a good state. Let's locate the battery. It's pretty easy to find and luckily it's not soldered or anything. So it's just a clip and it's quite easy to remove it. And what we see here on the left side are the two boards. So the two extension boards. So like Roland did also for the EMU devices, you could buy additional ROM boards, which were also quite expensive to get more sample sounds. And this one comes already fully packed with expansions from the Orbit and the Planet Fat modules. So to remove the battery, you need to have a screwdriver and get under the battery and then you can quite easily shovel it out. And it's a BR2335 battery. And I also did some research on batteries and the numbers indicate the size, the thickness and the width of the battery and has no meaning of the power. So you need to check for a three volts battery and BR means that it's lithium. I'm, did I pronounce it correctly? Lithium, lithium, I don't know. But I guess you know what I mean. And these are actually pretty hard to get and quite expensive. So I paid 25 euros for such batteries. Turns out you could also instead use a CR2335, which are easier to get and they only cost around one to two euro. But I read that they might not last that long and also lose power when the device is off. So it's safer to go with the BR, but just in case I ordered both of them. But let's go with the proper model and we simply shove it in again with the plus side on the top. Let's first make a check and turn it on if it's still working. And it seems we still have the error. We have now a new battery, but the NVRAM is still a bit of scrambled. So we need to fix that as well. 
So here we have it back at its place. And what we need to do first is we need to reset the NVRAM. To do so, you need to press both the left and the right arrow buttons and then switch on the device. And then you end up in a diagnostics menu, which gives you several options which you should not touch at all, except the one which we will find quite at the end which is number 18, initialize NVRAM. So let's do that by pressing the enter button. And again. And now it should work again. But what we also want to do is to update the operating system. So the firmware, it turns out there are several versions. So if you have a model with version one, you need to have a specific hardware card to update it. It does not only work with the file and this hardware is no longer available since EMU is no longer available. But also during my research I found out that the Ray Bellis is working on a tool which allows it to do it anyway. So watch his space at the, his website emu.tools so you can get further information about this tool and how to get to version two. Luckily, my model was already on two, but there is a version 2.01, which fixes quite some terrible issues with the device. So it's absolutely helpful to upgrade it to that version. And uh, yeah, to do so is also a bit tricky because the tool you need, the update tool is designed for a maximum of Windows XP, <laughs> which is dead and gone for quite some time, but luckily, the good thing about Windows is that you can run the oldest crap <laughs> on latest systems if you know how to deal with that. And yeah, it turns out I could do that as well. So what you need to download is the EMU loader version 1.1. It's important that you have the latest one, the 1.1 version, and also the operating system, which you can get from this EMU Mania website, which gladly hosts all those old files you need and I will also have all the URLs, the web links down in the description of the video so you can get the links from there. So after we downloaded these two files, we need to unzip them. So the first one contains the firmware and the second contains this installer for this uploader, the firmware uploader or installer and we both unzip them. We can directly get rid of the zip files. We don't need them anymore. And then we open up here the firmware folder. We also only need the firmware. And let's also get rid of the folder. We don't need that as well. And now we need to install the software which surprisingly works for me here now because I did it before, I already did before the update and I only recorded this again to show you. So the first time it crashed straight away and what you need to do to make it work is to set the compatibility mode. And you can do this by go here on properties of the file and there you can activate the compatibility mode and you need to set this to Windows XP Service Pack 3 and then the installer works totally nice. Same for running the software. Make sure that you activate the compatibility mode also for Windows XP version 3 and then we'll also get this version here. And then you need to locate your MIDI ports which uh, are connected to the oddity. So, and then we need to open up the OS downloader. Here is a uploads dialog and you need, we already have selected here the MIDI device and you need to select the firmware, which we have here on the desktop as well. And yeah, that's the thing we need to do. And to make it possible to make it uploadable, you need to put the device into this upload mode and you can do this by keeping the clock and the enter button pressed while turning on the device to make it ready to upload and then you can finally press the upload button and the OS will install on the device, which I already did, so I don't repeat that now. So let's finally switch over to having a listen to all the sounds.
So, wow, I think this device sounds really nice and impressive and has some unusual sounds I don't have from any other device so far. And yeah, I will definitely have some fun with that and need to dig in deeper into it. Do you have further questions about it? Should I do some more demos about it? Write me down in the comments or do you have other tips or ideas for it? Also write it down in the comments and until next time, make some funky music.